Several arrests in dozens of robberies across New York City. Those arrested are all migrants. A horrific attack, and it was all caught on camera. Police ultimately put the surveillance video of that attack. Six men have been charged in connection to that brutal attack caught on camera, and the NYPD is still looking for more suspects. Five alleged migrant criminals, and they did it while working around sanctuary city policies. The leader of the crew, identified as Victor Para, will blast out a message via WhatsApp that he is looking for phones. Migrant moped gang. Two men were busted in the Bronx as part of a moped riding migrant crew that has been snatching cell phones right out of New Yorkers' hands in daring bursts of street crime. And police sources say they've already flipped on the group's ringleader. The two suspects, Kleber Andrade, 19, and Juan Uzcat Gui, 23, are allegedly part of a wider ring whose members are connected to 62 different instances of grand larceny throughout the Big Apple, including a shocking caught-on-video heist in which a 62-year-old woman was brutally dragged down a Brooklyn street, police sources told The Post. Cops are still searching for the ringleader, a Venezuelan migrant named Victor Pera, 30, of the Bronx who was cut loose by a judge in December after getting picked up for grand larceny, sources said. At a Monday press conference, NYPD inspector Nicholas Fiore said Para has convinced others to go do his dirty work to grab phones and stuff. He's the big target, Fiore said in a video posted to X. He's caused a lot of problems in New York City, and hopefully we'll grab him. We get some headway on this. The leader of the crew, identified as Victor Para, will blast out a message via WhatsApp that he is looking for phones. 62 robberies where the robbers are accused of sneaking up on their unsuspecting victims, mostly women, on mopeds. Power will send out specific orders for what type of phone he is looking for. They're essentially ghost criminals. No criminal history. No photos. Those involved are accused of snatching their purses and their phones all to make money while the mastermind behind it remains on the loose tonight. The NYPD outlined the gang's vicious tactics in a video clip posted online, which showed a moped-born robber dragging Irina Pantaleeva, 62, across the pavement in front of Bay Gourmet Deli Juice Bar on Sheepshead Bay Road just three days after Christmas. The thieves made off with Pantaleeva's bags, keys, phone, credit cards, and glasses, all while she careened through the air and slammed into a metal bike rack. I feel bad, I feel bad, Pantaleeva told the Post over the phone. The thieves stole my bag. Nesat Mamudowski, 69, her building super, told the Post that the bruised and battered victim was terrified after the attack and had him change her apartment lock. She's a nice lady, a good person, Mamudowski said of Pantaleeva, labeling her attackers scumbags. I came here 44 years ago from Yugoslavia, and I had respect for the USA, he said, not like these thieves. Authorities hope to arrest the ringleader Monday after Andrade and Uzcat Gui gave him up, sources said. Cops have also identified six other people connected to the ring. Jan Jimenez, 25, of Manhattan. Anthony Ramos, 21, of Manhattan. Richard Salido, 21, of the Bronx. BK Jimenez, 21, of the Bronx. Maria Manora, 32, of Manhattan. And Samuel Castro, 27, of Queens, according to sources. All have previous grand larceny arrests for criminal activity that sources say is related to the conspiracy, which has been terrorizing the city since about mid-November. But they're all free without bail ahead of their impending court dates, sources said. At a separate press conference at One Police Plaza on Monday, NYPD Chief of Detectives Joe Kenny said the alleged suspects are part of a sophisticated criminal enterprise made up of recently arrived immigrants. Para, who cops said entered the U.S. in 2023, would send specific orders to henchmen in his 14-member crew, detailing the kind of phone he was looking for. Para will blast out a message via WhatsApp that he is looking for phones, Kenny said, and then the text will say, I have money, I'm available, go get them. Scooter drivers make $100 a day, and the actual phone snatcher could make three to $600 per stolen device, according to cops. Once he had the phones in hand, Para would have a hacker break into financial or banking apps so they could make fraudulent buys, Kenny said. After they'd cleaned out their victim, Para would send the phone to buyers in cities like Miami or Houston, or foreign countries like Colombia or Venezuela, police officials said. This network of thieves predominantly live in the migrant shelter system, Kenny said. 
They use social media platforms to organize and coordinate this. This is how they operate. Although cops have linked 62 incidents across the city to the group, they may have been involved in as many as 150, police officials said. Cops are still searching for seven people connected to the ring. Three of them are known and wanted, though the other four haven't been identified yet, officials said. The NYPD also recovered 22 phones at the Bronx residence they raided this morning, officials said. The suspects have allegedly taken hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of electronics, though cops couldn't pinpoint the exact amount. Several arrests in dozens of robberies across New York City. Those arrested are all migrants. These thieves would ride up behind their victims on the sidewalk, steal their property, and then make their getaway. In this alleged crime spree, the NYPD says 13 men and a woman were behind a lucrative robbery ring. NYPD walking this duo, 20-year-old Alexander Daker and 24-year-old Roxana Sejos. The small number of people are breaking the law and having a huge impact on our public safety. The robbery ring, and others like it, worry law enforcement specifically because the migrants often have multiple aliases and swap identities and birthdays, turning them into so-called ghost perps who become very hard to track, sources said. Andrade and Uzcat Gui, who know each other from Colombia, were also arrested on Friday for allegedly committing back-to-back -back phone snatches on a stolen moped in Lower Manhattan. Police sources say the two fled from Manhattan over the Robert F. Kennedy Bridge but law enforcement spotted them on the BQE and arrested them afterward in Queens. During the pursuit, the two dumped a bag that a Good Samaritan later turned in at the 114th Precinct. Sources say it had three cell phones in it, two belonging to their victims and one belonging to one of the suspects. At some point after the arrest, the two gave up information that helped secure Monday's warrant, which was ostensibly meant to snag Para. Both men were charged individually Saturday with grand larceny for stealing a moped, resisting arrest, and stolen property offenses. We want to be extremely clear, Mayor Eric Adams said at the press conference. It doesn't matter if a person is a migrant, an asylum seeker, or the person is a long-term New Yorker. You break the law, you will be investigated, and it will be handled by our criminal justice system. You should not be allowed to walk the streets of the city of New York if you are committing any form of criminal behavior that's impacting the quality of life of New Yorkers, he continued. These people do not have a license to steal in our city. Love to entertain Mayor Eric Adams signaled Tuesday that he would love to entertain the chance of cooperating more with federal immigration authorities in situations involving migrants who've committed dangerous crimes, a departure from past statements he's made on New York City's sanctuary status. Adams, who testified before lawmakers in Albany on Tuesday, was responding to a question from State Assemblyman Michael Riley, Staten Island, who asked if he'd consider issuing an executive order to allow the NYPD to engage in more cooperation with U.S. immigration and customs enforcement officials. As he's done before, Adams reiterated that city laws passed in 2014 under former Mayor Bill de Blasio's administration prevent him from doing that but added that he'd be open to such a move if the city's lawyers gave him their stamp of approval. If my legal team tells me I have the authority to have cooperation with ICE for those who commit felony dangerous crimes, that is something we would love to entertain, he said. Adams weighed in on the issue a day earlier as well, saying that it was up to the city council to review those laws. But on Monday, he stopped short of offering a preference on how he would like to proceed. The rhetoric and wrangling over the city's sanctuary status comes just days after migrants were accused of beating two NYPD officers in Times Square. Federal immigration authorities say two of the asylum seekers arrested for attacking New York City police officers recently. A horrific attack and it was all caught on camera. Police ultimately put the surveillance video of that attack. Fox 5 New York's Lizette Nunez live in Times Square this morning with the latest on the charges these men now face. Now there's a fear looming that the men involved with that attack could avoid being brought to justice. A group of five men have been arrested, accused of attacking a group of New York City police officers. More recently on Monday, the NYPD announced that they'd busted seven people, five of them migrants, in connection with a series of brazen cell phone robberies carried out on mopeds. In recent weeks, Adams has fielded a number of questions on how leading a sanctuary city has impacted his ability to manage the migrant crisis. 
which has strained the city's budget and sent his administration into repeated scrambles over how to care for the more than 150,000 asylum seekers who've streamed into the city over the past two years. Asked by a reporter Tuesday in Albany if he's been reluctant to share his views on the city's sanctuary status because he believes current restrictions should remain as is, Adams said no and added that he intends to discuss the issue at greater length with the city council, which just last week overrode two of his vetoes on criminal justice bills he opposed. I don't want to broadside the city council. We're going to have the conversation about those who commit serious crimes, and I want to sit down with them first, have the conversation, and then we'll publicly say what we're doing, he said. Changes to Sanctuary City Law New York City Mayor Eric Adams voiced support on Tuesday for changes to sanctuary city laws that currently protect migrants in New York. Calling the policies a detriment to public safety, Adams spoke during a news conference following similar statements he made on Monday, saying he believes New York City agencies should be free to cooperate more readily with U.S. ICE to deport immigrants who have been accused of committing crimes. We should be communicating with ICE, and if ICE makes the determination of deporting, then they should. Adams, a former New York City Police Department officer, said at the news conference, according to AP, The mere fact that we cannot share with ICE that this person has committed three robberies, that this person is part of an organized gang crew, the mere fact that we can't say that or communicate that, that's problematic for me, he said, reported AP. Adams has made similar comments on multiple occasions as of late, following what he and the NYPD have claimed to be an uptick in violent and serious crime committed by migrants after several high-profile cases made headlines in recent weeks. Six men have been charged in connection to that brutal attack caught on camera. The NYPD is still looking for more suspects. Five arrests have been made, but four of those suspects have already been released on bail. Now there's a fear looming that the men involved with that attack could avoid being brought to justice. Not only an attack on the individuals who wore the police uniform, but it was an attack on our symbol of justice. Get them all and send them back. You don't, you don't touch our police officers. You don't touch anybody. Adams' critics have pointed toward crime data often dating back to April 2022, when Texas Governor Greg Abbott began sending buses of migrants to NYC. While Adams did not specify what aspects of the law he would like to see changed, he would need the city council's approval to make any such changes in the first place, something officials have said isn't likely to come, according to AP. Immigration Advocates' Response Zachary Ahmad Senior policy counsel at the New York Civil Liberties Union expressed concern about Adams' push for further cooperation with ICE, saying in a statement, Mayor Adams' shameful threats to end New York's years-long status as a sanctuary city will only result in the cruel targeting, demonization, and demoralization of our immigrant neighbors. Ahmad also said that Adams' claims of the new arrivals driving up crime rates is false, saying that data proves there is no crime wave at all. Instead of scapegoating those in need and threatening immigrants' rights to due process, Mayor Adams should provide secure housing, supportive services, and legal assistance to our new neighbors. Immigrants are not props for theatrics that put their lives at risk, he concluded. Sanctuary City Laws A sanctuary city is not a legal term recognized by federal law. Instead, it's a political term that refers to a collection of local policies that dictate how the federal government and by extension, immigration officials interact with state or local agencies. In a general sense, these local policies usually pertain to the sharing of information on non-citizen residents between federal immigration agencies and state or local agencies. Proponents of these policies say they serve as important protections to allow people of different immigration statuses to live without the fear of what they believe to be unfair legal action such as deportation or arrest, especially when doing things like getting medical care or seeking assistance after witnessing or becoming a victim of a crime. Five alleged migrant criminals, and they did it while working around sanctuary city policies. All of those arrests you just saw happen because local authorities ignored their detainer request to keep these guys in custody. <laughs> Heinous crimes are essentially able to roam the streets after release without any notice. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, 
these laws are not only federally legal, but constitutional. Some policies and practices that may appear in sanctuary cities include not complying with detainer requests unless they come with a judicial warrant, not collecting immigration-related information in the provision of city services unless otherwise required by state or federal law, not allowing local funds, personnel, or facilities to be used for immigration enforcement, declaring schools and courthouses to be safe places where people can go without fear immigration enforcement activities or raids, not allowing ICE or other DHS agents into local jails, requiring notice to people in jail if ICE or DHS wants to talk to them for any reason, requiring ICE and DHS to notify an inmate's attorney prior to talking to them for any reason and to certify having done so, requiring ICE and DHS officers to identify themselves and wear duty jackets if allowed into any local facilities, not discriminating on the basis of alienage or immigration status in the provision of city services unless otherwise required by state or federal law, and providing funding for legal representation for local residents in immigration proceedings. In New York City, some notable sanctuary laws include an executive order signed by Mayor Ed Koch in 1989 barring city officials from sharing information on immigrants without written permission from the person in question, unless the information is pertinent to a criminal matter. A city law was passed in 2011, limiting the extent to which NYC police and legal correctional agencies are allowed to cooperate with ICE. An expansion of the 2011 law made in 2014 by Mayor Bill de Blasio removed ICE's Rikers Island office, removed ICE presence in all city jails, and prevented the NYPD or the Department of Correction from honoring ICE detainer requests without a judicial warrant, with exceptions for people on terrorist watch lists or those who had violent or serious crime convictions on their records. One of the issues the feds have with jurisdictions like King County is their refusal to detain prisoners for immigration agents. However, a detainer request is not a valid warrant. We would not hold people beyond uh, their release date. It's better than it was. It gives, it gives much more clear direction to ICE agents. A 2018 law also passed by de Blasio requiring that senior city officials must review and approve any request for cooperation from ICE, and assistance would not be rendered if it was found that requests could aid in deportation proceedings. Waiting to enter U.S. Lila, a 39-year-old Honduran woman, is waiting three weeks and counting to cross into Texas as she waits for her Cuban partner to seek asylum in the U.S. The cartels make it too dangerous to turn around, and the U.S. government offers no guarantees if she keeps going. The arrival of large groups of migrants has overwhelmed Border Patrol agents, with over 8,000 migrants arriving at the Texas border city of Eagle Pass. Many others have not waited and crossed through the Rio Grande, including a three-year-old boy who authorities say drowned. An international bridge remained closed Friday as agents are reassigned to handle the large numbers in Eagle Pass, which has been the epicenter of Republican Governor Greg Abbott's border mission known as Operation Lone Star. Residents of Eagle Pass and Piedras Negras said that the size of the groups now is unusual, and migrants who arrived this week said they formed organically along the way. Migrants were stopped at the border 142,037 times during the first 17 days of September, up 15% from the same period last month. The vast majority are illegal entries. As the president and his team continue working to deliver a historic bipartisan agreement on the border. More than 700,000 illegals have been welcomed into our country illegally. The Take Our Border Back convoy says it'll be calling on the government to address the crisis at the border. It is a much higher number. The Biden administration has replaced detain and deport with catch and release. Mexico's top diplomat, Alicia Barcina, said at a news conference in New York that migrant shelters in Ciudad Juarez, across from El Paso, Texas, are 95% full. She said the Mexican government is very worried about the border closures and the increase in migrants and called for more action to limit migration through the Darien Gap. The Border Patrol has been overwhelmed by asylum seekers on parts of the U.S. border with Mexico, leading to closures in San Diego and El Paso. The large crowds of migrants crossing into Eagle Pass were no longer visible, 
but residents in Eagle Pass were still dealing with the impact. The closures began when one of two international bridges in Eagle Pass announced a closure at 6 p.m., causing inconvenience for residents who had to reroute to other international bridge. Students who cross from Mexico into the U.S. every day were also affected. Laura Salazar, 22, typically drives her younger brother Victor and cousin America to school, as it took them an hour and 15 minutes to cross the Piedras Negras. The long wait time convinced them to try the pedestrian bridge, which only took them about 15 minutes to cross into Eagle Pass in the morning, but the 25-minute walk to school was harder to get done in time. The closures extended to an international railway in Eagle Pass, with Union Pacific Railroad Company stating that the track would reopen at midnight Saturday. After a dip in illegal crossings following new asylum restrictions in May, President Joe Biden's administration is again on its heels. Democratic mayors and governors are seeking more relief for hosting asylum seekers, while Republicans are seizing on the issue ahead of 2024 elections. In August, the Border Patrol made 181,509 arrests on the Mexican border, up 37% from July, but little changed from August 2022, and well below the high of more than 220,000 in December. People and families with children fueled the increase, with 93,999 arrests, the highest on record, up from 60,000 in July and 31,000 in June. Fault Biden for crisis. For more than a year, Texas Governor Greg Abbott has been busing migrants from the southern U.S. border to places like New York, Washington, and Chicago, prompting angry complaints from Democratic officials in those cities. The local authorities have said the influx of homeless, jobless newcomers is unsustainable. Speaking in New York Wednesday, the Republican Abbott agreed it was unsustainable, but said he's not the person most to blame. The lead importer of migrants to New York is not Texas, it's Joe Biden, he said at a breakfast event held by the Manhattan Institute, a conservative think tank. Abbott said he began the busing program in response to the plight of the small border towns in his state who do not have the resources to deal with border crossers. It's a crisis. It's chaotic and it must stop, he said, urging the president to enforce laws he said gives the White House authority to repel migrants at the border. Until that time comes, Abbott said, Texas is going to continue to use every tool that we can to secure the border the best that we can. Those steps have included placing buoys, a floating border wall, in the Rio Grande to make it even harder to cross the turbulent river, where many migrants, including children, have drowned. Razor wire has also been uncoiled along the border, and the state has paid for many buses to transport migrants to New York and other big cities run by Democrats. One of the bus companies that's been bringing migrants here from Texas has agreed to stop doing so. Today's lawsuit should serve as a warning to all those who break the law in this way. They don't have to put any money up now, uh, and in return, they will uh, hit the pause button. It's a little bit more difficult for us to, to get a grasp as to where they're going to exit. The city is still waiting to be assigned a court date in this lawsuit against these 17 bus companies. Last week, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre again accused Abbott of turning the border crisis into a political stunt. He said the White House has given the city $140 million in aid, though the city wants more. Last week, Biden's administration gave hundreds of thousands of asylum seekers from Venezuela temporary protected status, which would expedite their ability to legally work in the U.S. Other U.S. cities have also dealt with an influx of migrants trying to escape poverty, crime, or oppression in their home nations. In San Diego, the country's Board of Supervisors declared border crossings by asylum seekers an urgent humanitarian crisis and pleaded with the White House for more aid. Since September 13, U.S. authorities have been dropping off migrants at transit centers in San Diego and the suburbs of El Cajon and Oceanside. Migrants are being released across the country with little direction and few resources, the county statement said, calling on the federal government to limit releases or provide more financial support. San Diego, like other border cities, is generally only a temporary home for asylum seekers, who fan out across the country to join other migrants, family and friends. The International Organization for Migration appealed to Mexico and Central America to help address the 
unprecedented numbers of vulnerable migrants transit throughout the region, adding that long-term solutions are needed to solve the underlying problems that drive people from their own countries. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.